Hey YouTube, it's Demetri, and today we're going to answer a subscriber's question. Uh, Noor R, I think it's how you pronounce it. You can look at this and tell me what you think. Uh, put, put in the comments below how you think that's pronounced. Uh, anyways, ask the question. I have heard that a person's ability to do new learning reduce after age of 25. I know you read a lot of math and stats. What's your experience with this? Assuming you are above the age of 25 here. So yes, I am above the age of 25. I am 35 years old and... I have created new things throughout my entire career. When I first started my first job, I was told basically the same kind of nonsensical story. You know, Dimitri, after you hit 25, maybe 30, I think 30 was the number they gave me, uh, like your new creativity piece is just gonna go down the tubes here. So anyways, last five years here, I've created, I think two, maybe in the last six or seven years, uh, two, I would say somewhat novel frameworks for modeling and model designs um, for again, two different firms here. My creati creativity, I think is actually higher than ever at the age of 35. I do not see it declining. I do not buy the research that you see on the internet. So if you actually research this and look, there are articles that claim like at a very specific age or there's a correlation with declining decline in age and decline of creativity. I don't buy it. Um, and let me explain why. There are way too many factors to include into this. So if you actually look at other articles, there are scientific articles that point out all the weaknesses, all the factors that cannot be controlled for. Um, but the main one is just going to be lifestyle as you age. So if you want the short answer, you want to click away from the video right now, thumbs up, right? This is lifestyle that you're going to pick. So um, you look at your life, right? You, I was a young guy, um, you know, 22 and undergrad graduating, really excited to get going. I didn't have the academic tools to really make new discoveries. You're not going to have it. Um, then you think about, you know, grad school, you put two more years in. I took a year to work. So I was 25 when I graduated with my master's here. If you do a PhD, you're probably going to be 30. So what you're telling me is no one ever comes up with a breakthrough after they graduate with their PhD. Okay, we all know this is nonsense. So I would point that out just as a little starting point here. Um, but you look at life, the way life works, right? You're a young individual, you go to school, you learn a bunch of tools, you become creative. Maybe you don't go to school, maybe you're just creative on your own and you do your own self-learning. Um, but either way, you end up in this point where you have a gap of singleness. You're single and then you find a partner and you get married. That takes up time. Um, and then eventually most people are gonna have a family. You're gonna have kids into this mix. Now, when you look at this on timing, when I was young, I was very motivated to do new things, to make cool ideas, um, to solve the world's problems, right? I, I could help you fix everything. Uh, the reality is, is then you start to realize as you get older and you're starting to learn, I mean, you guys can kind of see over here. I have a stack of books I had for another video. Um, I have read probably four of these, three or four of these out of these five or six here. There are more books I want to read. There's more things I want to learn. The world is huge. Um, but when you start to get older and you have a spouse, you add a spouse into the mix, your time now, your free time to learn and study and really dive deep, right? You don't become creative um, with 30 minutes of studying. Uh, it's something you have to really dive into and you have to really focus on here, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but you know, your time gets limited. And then by the time you have kids, you start to come 30, 35. Um, a lot of us too, our parents are starting to age here. So my parents are a little bit younger. I had friends though, right now that I went to, you know, elementary school with, both their parents are dead. Um, so you get to this point in life and you start to really reframe your thinking of, okay, I was young, as excited, as motivated. Who cares? Like who cares about creating something new? Um, I'm more concerned about, you know, your spouse, or if you're not married yet, now you're like in a hurry to get married. Um, and if you don't have kids, and for those of you that are younger that probably don't realize this, there's a, there's a clock that's ticking um, for women on when you can have a child, because once you become so old, um, you can't have kids. Just physically, most women, their bodies will not produce kids, or your kids will have, um, you know, physical or mental disabilities. So having kids younger is a priority. As you go through life and you're rushing to get all these things done, even once you have the kids, I mean, I'm 35 now with a few younger kids. My kids are my priority. They have, you know, I have gymnastics I got to run to today. So I've got gymnastics lessons I got to do. Um, we're practicing roller skating. We're doing bicycling. Um, I've got to help somebody move. A brother-in-law moved this weekend. So I'm working on that. I, mean, I got... I live on a, a, a big property now, right? I'm not a broke college student sitting in a dorm with nothing else to do. Um, I've got all these other responsibilities that starts to stack up here. So I think naturally when you look at people, yeah, your creativity is going to fall off, not because your mental decline or not because there is some 
I don't know, other sort of factor that's internal just to you. It's a sociological development as, as you age, your priorities are going to shift. There are things you're going to want to do in your life and you have to do them in specific points of time. If not, you're not gonna have that opportunity here. So that is why we see that. Now, on the creativity piece, I feel sharper than ever. Um, I feel like I have absolutely no time to do it. Um, so in the last few years here, I've come up with a whole new modeling framework and design work, and it's tying off of ideas of quantum space. So quantum um, calculations within quantitative finance space. I would not say it is quantum computing, um, but it is quantum-esque, and it utilizes some of the theories and ideas in that space within the credit realm. Whole other thing. Again, I'm really excited. The things that are creative. I have, again, all these books I want to read. I have all these things I want to study. Even topics I studied in the past, I want to read more on. Now, I think most people do become less creative with time when we look at them. And part of this is going to be, uh, they're the sort of personalities that just accept things as facts. I have unfortunately ran across way too many people in this realm. Um, I would say the vast majority of people are this. I teach you something, you go, okay, this is fact, and you never challenge it. You never look at other ideas. Um, one of the biggest benefits I had in high school was at the Jesuit high school I went to really focused on learning how to think. It was not this is the answer. This is how you should think. And we would have debates in class, for example, on politics and wars and, you know, the death penalty, for example, and people would get very upset. Um, but it made you think. You heard the other perspectives and the teachers forced you to listen. We do not do that as adults, right? You hear something on the internet and you're like, yeah, these people are idiots. I'm not going to listen to them. They know nothing. They're the other side. Um, but you need to have that ability to challenge constantly, reevaluate. I mean, even me, I'm going back. So people go, oh, Dimitri, you're not really, you know, a quant. You're not really a mathematician. You're not really whatever. I do go back and I read basic books, right? Linear algebra books. Introduction to Calculus, ODE books, PDE books. Like, it's just things I want to read. I've covered a lot of this over my lifetime. I forget it. I was talking to a recent hire I had, and he was saying, you know, he had a math undergrad, and he's like, I don't know, I've forgotten most of this. I could go back and figure it out for you, but, you know, I don't, I don't do this daily. I don't remember all these nuanced details. You have a whole stack of math classes to take. So I think for many of you as well, it's your priorities change. You're not going to be able to do that. Um, the other piece is the motivation behind that, um, the time to set aside for that, and the time to really sit and think and challenge ideas. I think as you become older, you start to realize, I just don't care anymore. Um, the other piece, I think, is too many people just accept what they currently know as fact when a large portion of what you do know, I'm going to put in air quotes here, you know that is true is not really true, but you just, you never have the time to challenge things. And to be creative, especially in the quant space, you have to challenge it. That's why I encourage people to do this. I think some companies like Renaissance Technology, they don't hire people with a finance background. And yes, many firms do. I talked about this in another video, but they do not. They like to get people that don't have any idea what finance looks like. And they want you to reframe the ideas and re-challenge the ideas. If I teach you everything out of a book, which everybody else does, we're all doing it the same way, it is very hard to get creative and to break out of that mold and do something different and perhaps see the problem more clearly um, through a better lens here. So no, I do not think creativity declines with age as like a thing, like if you hit a number, like you're doomed. Um, it is really up to you as a personal person of an interest. Um, I can tell you now I am drowning, literally drowning with things to do. Um, I get hundreds of messages on LinkedIn, um, through my inbox or my email, through work. Um, so doing this whole YouTube channel, doing my other personal YouTube channel where I'm rebuilding, a, I'm restoring a classic muscle car here, which is my dad's high school car. I'm gardening. I have my day job. I have my two kids. I have my wife. Most people aren't going to do all that. It's fine, right? It's just a lot of stress, a lot of responsibilities, a lot of people depending on you. They're going to throw it all out the window and they're going to say, hey, I've got a wife and kids. I don't need to publish any more papers. Um, I don't need to make, you know, an extra $100,000. Like I'm making good money at the age of 30, 35. There's no reason to really do this anymore. So I think that's the kind of piece there. Now, it's also challenging, I think, to generate creativity in itself, the excitement, the spark that you had when you were a student. Um, but I would say if you just keep buying books and reading and learning and researching, um, that spark will continue to grow as you read and find things that are interesting to you. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. <laughs>